let's not beat around the bush because you already know what I'm going to be showing you with this quick tip, how to make wires in Fusion 360. Functionally, this isn't really required unless knowing the length of those wires is important for you. But aesthetically, it can really make those designs look amazing. One of the motors already has these created. So that gives you an idea of where I'm headed with this endeavor. Ignoring that I could just circular pattern those for all four motors, let's flip around and focus on an area where I can show you how this was done. Right off the bat, I want to change the transparency of the arm because I will need it to drive where the wires go, like through the provided hole. But at the same rate, I'll need to be able to select through it, so let's temporarily make it unselectable. When I do, you'll see the browser updated to reflect this. Now I should have followed rule 1 here and created and activated a new component for the wire, but looking past that, I'll go to create the sketch that'll make the wire. I'll do this with a sweep eventually. So for that type of feature I will need a profile and a path. We'll insert a sketch onto the circular face where the wire will start, then project the face to use as the sweep profile. Now I'll grab my spline tool and start it from the center of the projected circle. I'll drop two more control points on the spline, but try to keep the number to a minimum. Now to make this 2D spline 3D, I'll access my move command by hitting the M key on my keyboard and drag it out from the 2D plane, then towards the arm. I'll do the same with the spline midpoint, and to help ensure they are near where they need to be, I'll start to constantly change my vantage point. I'd like to use those standard front, right, and top views, but because of the odd orientation of this arm in relation to the global coordinates, this is somewhat more difficult. Anyway, to get the spline endpoint to attach to the right place, I'm not going to willy-nilly eyeball it with the move tool. I'll instead project the terminal to the sketch, but a normal projection won't do. Instead, in the S key shortcut, I'll find and use the Include 3D Geometry tool. This does exactly like it sounds, and now I can Ctrl select the center point of that projection and the end of the spline and use the context sensitive right mouse menu to define a coincident relationship to tie these together. Now this looks good enough that we can start to create the wire. It's definitely not done, but seeing the model come to life will make explaining next steps easier. So sweep, profile, path, set it to be a new component, and voila, there's our rudimentary wire. As I rotate around, you can start to see some issues with what we've done so far. Collisions, and how this wire ends is not very realistic. It shouldn't just end at that point, but it should do so near normal to that face. So let's go back to editing that sketch, and what you'll notice is just like you could move the control points on the spline, you can do the same with the tangency handles. We'll make a couple adjustments, inspect, and maybe make some more adjustments. What I want is some amount of straight section at the start, and where this is needed more is where the wire ends. When we're happy with that, we can make some additional changes to the mid control point on the spline too. This will help ensure the wire is routed through the hole. When we're done, finish the sketch and inspect what you've got now. This is a pretty good start, but there are other methods and considerations. My idea for this tip came from a fantastic tutorial I saw on Adafruit on the same subject. I'll link it in the description below because they do things a little different and go deeper into some other considerations. Anyway, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.